Harmony friends. It's uh, my privilege to be able to share the word with you this morning. Uh, could we all just close our eyes? I'm going to pray and then we'll get straight into it. Lord, thank you for the wonderful privilege that we have to be together this morning. Um, thank you, Lord, for the power of your word. Thank you, Lord, for the power of your spirit. Uh, thank you, Lord, for the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ alive within us, Lord Jesus. And I just pray, Lord, that as we look into your word this morning, that our hearts are stirred, that you settle our fears, that you give us vision this morning, Lord, and help us to see and understand that we are called for a much greater purpose together as your church. In your precious and wonderful name, amen. Would you turn with me in your Bibles to Song of Songs, 5 verse 2? And I read, it says, I slept, but my heart was awake. A sound, my beloved is knocking. Open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my perfect one. For my head is wet with dew, my locks with the drops of the night. I had put off my garments. How could I put it on? I'd bathed my feet. How could I soil them? My beloved put his hand through the latch and my heart was thrilled within me. I arose to open to my beloved and my hands dripped with myrrh, my fingers with liquid myrrh on the handles of the bolt. I opened to my beloved, but my beloved had turned and gone. My soul failed me. When I spoke, I sought him, but I found him not. I called him, but he gave no answer. The watchmen found me as they went about in the city. They beat me. They bruised me. They took away my veil, those watchmen of the walls. I adjure you, O daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my beloved, that you tell him I am sick with love. What is your beloved more than another beloved, O most beautiful among women? What is your beloved more than another beloved that he... That you thus adjure us. Song of Songs is a beautiful illustration. It's picture language. It's an illustration of, of our relationship with Jesus. Um, whenever our relationship with Jesus is described, even Paul uh, uses that analogy. He uses a marriage to describe our relationship. And so when we look in Song of Songs, we can see that this is a picture of how we are to work out our salvation, how we are to relate to God, to relate to Jesus. In this beautiful passage, I see three pictures of defining moments with Jesus. What is a defining moment? A defining moment is, is an event which typifies or determines all subsequent events, um, moments that change our lives. So if I have to think about defining moments in my life, I'll think about uh, the day I got married. I was single before I got married and after that I was married and my life would never be the same again. I moved out of my mom's house and I moved into my own house with my husband. I think of the day um, my first child was born. I was now a mom and I'll be a mom for the rest of my life. Um, I, I think about defining moments in history, uh, perhaps the day Nelson Mandela was released from prison. That was a defining moment, moment in the history of South Africa. Or perhaps the day Alan Donald and Lance Klusner really messed up on that last run in the World Cup all those years ago, and we'll never forget that. The consequences of that defining moment that changes everything. Well, I see here in Song of Songs these three defining moments. Um, they're pictures of Jesus, um, a lover who comes to his wife and he comes to the door, his hair is dripping with dew and he comes and rattles the door and um, she's already prepared for bed and she's, she's in bed and she's bathed and, and she says to herself, should I get up now? Should I soil my feet? Should I get dressed again? Uh, what an awkward time for him to come perhaps. And, and when she realizes, Yo, no, this is my lover at the door, she, she gets out of bed. But by the time she gets to the door, he's left already. 
and there's myrrh dripping from the door handles. And so she opens the door and rushes out into the night looking for him. And she's beaten by the watchman. Um, and the night takes a toll on her. And so I'd love us to look at uh, these three defining moments of Jesus as he comes to change us. The first picture for me is how Jesus comes to the world. Jesus came to the world for a moment. He walked on the earth for 30 years, 33 years. His ministry was three years long. It was but a moment. And the world was asleep while the greatest exchange took place between God and man. She had no idea what was taking place as Jesus was hung on the cross. And now all the world finds is the myrrh dripping from the handles, the, the remnant of the crucifixion. All of time was defined by the moment that Jesus uh, arrived in the world. And, and yet the world was asleep. She had no idea that the Savior had come, that the Savior had walked, and that the Savior had died for her. For her sins at that time but history remembers it it was a defining moment the fragrance of myrrh fills the room and the world is left with a longing deep inside the heart of every soul but the world makes excuses she tries to reason her way out of her pursuit of jesus will the world awake and regret and start searching for Jesus. She gets up in the night. She goes about in the dark crying out for her love. Beaten and alone. Will the maidens help her find Jesus? Will the church lead the world to Jesus? And tell her we know where he is. We know where you can find him. The second picture is a picture of how Jesus comes to the church. Jesus comes to the door of the church. He comes to love on her. He comes to be with her. He comes to share the secrets of his heart. He comes to awaken her and to lead her into a new thing. A deeper experience of him. A, a deeper, greater revelation of him. A moment when he wants to move among the church. But she's sleeping. She awakes and all she finds is the mirror on the door handle. The the sweet fragrance of his presence. And this stirs everything within her. We know he came and, and by faith we know that he will come again. The spirit and the bride cry out and they say, come, come Lord Jesus, come. But will the church go back to sleeping? Or will the church once again wake up from her sleep? Will the church make excuses not to go out into the cold night air will the church awake from her deep slumber with regret or will she go out into the darkest night covered with the fragrance of the gospel of jesus christ declaring to the world that she is faint with love charging every young maiden to to search for jesus Will she be prepared to be beaten and persecuted for what she believes by the watchman of the night? Driven by her longing to see her king again. Will she, be, will she overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of the testimony like Revelation says? Will she remain faint with love? The third scene for me, defining moments, is a picture of how Jesus comes to me or to you revelation 3 verse 20 says that jesus knocks at the door sometimes jesus arrives at the door of your life and he wants to come in and he wants to be with you you just you just get this sense like i need to go and pray and be with jesus now and if you let him in there's this easiness the winter disappears and spring arrives like the poem before this poem in, in Song of Songs 5 that we read speaks about how the winter disappears 
and the spring arrives. It's easy to pray. There's, there's great moments in God, great revelation that set you on a new path, defining moments with Jesus, where you have these incredible, deep encounters with God. When he arrives, he wants to fellowship with you. Don't, don't hide from him. John Bunyan says, He who runs from him, the, him in the morning will scarcely find him for the rest of the day. The moment when we open the door to Jesus, he comes in. He'll change us forever. We won't be the same. But will I get out of my bed every time Jesus comes to the door? Will I open the door to Jesus? Perhaps even if he doesn't come in. Or am I too busy? Am I too tired? Am I too distracted by the things of life? Am I preoccupied? Have I perhaps forgotten who it is who is at the door calling me? So Revelation 3 verse 20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him. And he with me. The one who conquers, I will grant him to sit with me on my throne. As I also conquered and sat down with the Father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. See, we stand on the threshold of what God is doing and about to do in the world today. Today we are living in defining moments. When Jesus is at the door knocking, he knocks at the door of the world today. He knocks at the door of the church today. He knocks at the door of my heart today. If we are to experience Jesus and, and the fullness of him in an unprecedented way, if we are to experience the exhilaration of of a mighty move of Jesus in the world today through his church in and through me personally then church we need to be ready we need to firstly be ready expectant and waiting we've got to get out of bed we've got to put our shoes on we've got to get dressed for the night air we've got to unlock the door there's a whole lot that has to happen before I can approach the threshold of the door. There's a preparation that has to take place. See, rising up starts in my room, in my private world. Rising up starts with leading my family. Rising up starts with grabbing hold of this word and knowing it and owning it and, and devouring it and allowing it to become a part of me. Rising up starts with the way I lead my life in private. We have to be prepared. If we are to be ready, we have to be a people who pray. Jonathan Edwards says, when God is about to do a mighty new thing, he always sets his people praying. I don't know about you, but I've never been more stirred to pray in my life than in this moment that we live in right now. We are living in defining moments, friends. God is about to do something. What do we do as a church? We pray. Number two, we need to recognize. We need to recognize the voice of the great shepherd. We need to recognize the voice of our lover at the door. We need to recognize his move. We need to recognize his presence. We need to, as a church, be able to recognize false teaching and false prophecy. Wherever there is the real move of God, there will always be the counterfeit. And Jesus warns us of this. The word warns us that there will be this move that almost seems as good as what God is doing. But it is not of God. We need to be able to discern. We need to be able to recognize the, the marks of our lover, the traits of our lover. Our spiritual ears need to be tuned to what God is saying to the world today. Tuned to what God is saying to the church. 
Thirdly, we need to respond. Able to put down my little projects and, and my agenda and, and my little vision and get behind what God is doing today. Am I able to, I, I have a call and a plan that God wants to work out, but I need to be uh, cognizant of the great plan that God has for the world today. See, God is on a mission to reach the world. He stands at the door and knocks. He stands at the door and knocks at the door uh, of the church and at the door of my heart because God is on a mission to be united with his people, to display his love. God is on a mission to rescue. Can I put my little agenda down right now to be part of God's great rescue plan? Next, number four, I need to be ready to go. Once I stand at the door, at the threshold of the night air, there's no going back. I need to be, uh, be able to walk out with boldness and not be afraid. Face the world scared, but full of courage. Alone, but determined. I need to be able to carry the aroma of Jesus. That smell of the myrrh, his, his, the gospel of Jesus Christ. The sweetness of the price that he paid for us. Can I follow Jesus where he goes? Do I know his call? Walk in his plan? Can I take the watchman's beating? The persecution that will come with shining the light of Jesus. Number five, I need to persevere. Isaiah 55 verse 6 says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Am I faint with love? Can I charge the maidens to search for him with me? Will I be relentless in my searching? See, we don't always have these amazing moments as Christians where the presence of God just seems so real. And every time I read the word, it comes alive. Sometimes there are these dull moments where Jesus has been at the door and now he's left. And I'm left on my own. And it's in times like that, when it seems so dark, when the world is going through something that our, in our lifetime we've never experienced before. I need to persevere. Can we persevere as a church? See, there's been a call. And we, we left with the aroma of the moon, the aroma of Jesus. And it's time to rise up. Master our strength. Master your strength and rise up. This is a sealer moment for the church today. From here, we go out into the night. I think we have we find ourselves having a moment to pause to consider to contemplate the great things God has done where we've come from where are we going this is a sealer moment for the world the world are taking stock they are taking stock on disasters toll the world are looking at the trajectories of their graphs and bracing themselves a lot of the world are in mourning right now. This is a sealer moment for the world. Sealer means to pause, to stop, to consider. But is this perhaps the church's finest hour? I want to share a beautiful movie with you that I watched. It's called The Finest Hours. And it's about um, a young marina who was called by his captain to go out into a very devastating storm. So what had happened was two ships uh, had snapped in half in the storm and there were sailors left stranded on the ships. And all there was was this young, very young guy in his early 20s, Bernie. Um, apparently he didn't even have much experience of that kind of shoreline 
shoreline in Massachusetts at the Chatham Harbour. And him and his little crewmates were recruited by the captain to go out and rescue these guys off the ship. The problem was that on their way out, they had to face this massive bar, which was a, sh a sh shawl, big waves that crashed over and over again. And their little rescue boat had to uh, accelerate and slow down, accelerate and slow down to be able to time the waves, to be able to get through. Once they were through that, they actually lost their compass, so they had no idea where they were going. And on top of that, they were in the middle of the storm. Anyway, this young guy and three, uh, three young guys with him take the rescue boat out. They find this shipwreck um, that is rested on, on a, a nearby um, reef or, or something. And, and they rescue 32 sailors off that ship that day. And, and that story goes down in history. See, the captain made a call for this young pilot to go out into the storm. They knew it was possibly a suicide mission. The biggest trials they would face before they even reached the shipwreck, before they even reached the sailors that they were going to save that day, but they went anyway. See, the world is looking to the church for answers. And every church is a rescue boat, big or small, we're carrying the one who will be the rescuer for the world today. I think of Isaiah 60, if you can turn there with me, that would be for me the anthem of God's heart for the time that we are in right now. Isaiah 60 verse 1, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples, but the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. All nations shall come to your light, and the kings to the brightness of your rising. Every church is a rescue boat. Every church, every believer, every follower of Jesus will face trials. Here and now, today, in the season that we're in, we may face loss, we may face persecution, we're going to face the storm. But it's amazing to think that God knows that we've got what it takes. And God is calling his church to arise and shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord and the power of the Holy Spirit has risen upon you, church. Church, arise. Michael Eaton says, The world's unconscious longings will be fulfilled when they find salvation in the God of the Bible. Who are we to sit on the shoreline when there are ships shipwrecked? Out at sea and we know we have the skills to rescue them. Isaiah's vision, everyone will see it fulfilled one day. But can I see it can I see it fulfilled now? Can we see God's brightly shining salvation? Is our light shining with clarity and purity and joy? Do we have a rescue team's vision for the world today? One that is desperate and expects to reach the nations. Are we expecting the thick darkness to lift and the light of God to enter the world today? One day the sun will shine on the city of Yahweh. The city of Yahweh is going up and the sun will shine on it and he'll shine in it. If we believe, it will affect our view of the people of God right now. And it will change the ambition of our lives. So I would love to just encourage you in this moment, church, 
that Jesus stands at the door, the, the door of our hearts, and he's calling us. He's calling us to arise. He's calling us to arise and shine in the darkest night for the world in this time. Jesus stands at the door of the world with a message, the sweet aroma of his crucifixion. And we the maidens charged to direct the world to Jesus. Jesus stands at the door of the church. Behold, I am doing a new thing. We are perhaps about to see a move of God like we've never experienced in our lifetime before. Perhaps, church, this is our finest hour. So let's respond to the Lord. I'd love to just pray with us. Maybe you're sitting there right now and you're thinking, I have never opened the door to Jesus. I don't know what it's like to have his aroma in my life or to understand his mission or to know even that he comes to me that he loves me so much and he comes to my door perhaps that's how you feel today i'd love to ask you to just respond to jesus anyone who opens the door to him he will come in his will is to come in and to be with you and to fellowship with you Perhaps you disconnected from a church or, or a church and you'd love to be more involved. I'd love you to reach out to those around you that you know are in church. If you're in our church, we'd love you to, to call on one of the leaders, one of your friends that you know and say, please pray for me. I don't want to miss what God is doing in the church today. And church with what God is doing requires so much unity. We have to rise as one. What is God saying and doing in and through the church today? So Lord, this morning I just want to dedicate every heart and soul, every mind to you this morning who has heard this message. We want to respond to you, Jesus. We know you stand at the door and knock. We know that your presence and your power waits for us to grab hold of that handle and be immersed in the fragrance of your love and joy the purity of your light that needs to go into the darkness. Count us in, Lord. I want to be part of the church's finest hour. Let this defining moment in history, COVID-19, lockdown for South Africa, be a defining moment for your church, Lord, where we will rise up and we will never be the same again. And the world will, will know that we have a voice and we will share the answer that we have, the great rescuer Jesus. And that every church, big or small, would master all their strength, their faith and their energy to be a rescue boat in this season and in the time to come. Father God, release your power upon your church today. In Jesus' name, Amen. Bless you, church. Sending love to your families. Thank you for being a part of our meeting together this morning.